time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a very practical question is astrophysicist Dr. Hugh Ross. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you for having me on the show. Hugh, I've been collecting letters recently from social media, and I started noticing a theme. And since it's the new year and it's a good time, many people want to try something new. I thought maybe we could start a conversation about how to start an apologetics ministry. This first question is from Angelica. She asks, my church doesn't have an apologetics ministry. What would be some of the essentials of such a ministry? Do you have any advice? Well, you want to make sure it's good apologetics. You know, a friend of mine said apologetics comes in three categories, top, pop, and slop. You definitely don't want to bring the sloppy apologetics in. So first of all, make sure you get some really good resources. Mm -hmm. Try to recruit some people you know uh, that have a solid background in apologetics. Uh, that, that would be the first thing. And then uh, start small. You know, get a group going and uh, build it up. It's been my experience that if you actually start an apologetics class in a church, for example, and do it the right way, it will quickly become the largest class in the church. So I'm imagining that part of recruiting good people is actually recruiting people that have experience doing apologetics. It's not just all from books. They've actually actively been sharing their faith, would you say? Yeah, leading people to Christ through solid reasons, uh, not just presenting the gospel, uh, but actually giving people the evidence that enables them to respond to the gospel. I really like your advice about starting small People could even start with a home group, I'm imagining. Our next question is from Mike. He asks, churches seem generally equipped to train people on how to share the gospel. But when it comes to truly equipping members with evidences for defending their worldview, sometimes they seem resistant. Uh, have you noticed the same? And how might I help change that culture? Yeah, typically the resistance comes because people are worried that the evidences are gonna be controversial mm -hmm. and they're worried that there might be divisions amongst the Christians. And I think a good way to respond to that is, well, present the different views. If there are different views on how the evidences uh, are operating, present those different views, open up for discussion. A good apologetics class is one that encourages uh, questions, discussion, and debate. I think it's important that the class needs to involve people that are not yet believers. I mean, they will bring up the good questions. And it's important, too, that the leader of the class doesn't answer all the questions, but says, that's a great question. How would all of you respond to that? I'd like to hear your different responses. I really love that. I love several things you said there. And some people may bristle a little bit at using the word debate, but I think in context, what you're saying there is, uh, you know, if there's differences about apologetic approaches, you know, have different presentations and allow people to talk about it and ask questions. Um, I love that. And I know in your class, uh, when you started your class, one of the things you guys did to appeal to non-Christians and to make the class inviting was you actually held the class next door off the, the church property in a little strip mall area. So maybe thinking creatively about your location. Yeah, making sure that there isn't a stained glass barrier that's going to uh, prevent people who are not yet believers from getting involved. So yeah, what we do is we held our class in a place where there was nothing about the church on the door or the signs. I mean, it was basically a discussion room. People thought it was a philosophy club. And we talk about encouraging debates. I think the best way to do that, get the Christians debating with one another, get them debating with one another in a friendly, loving, charitable way and that will invite the non-Christians to jump in and debate those issues. Because I think what's going to make an apologetics class really uh, successful is when they see Christians and non-Christians debating one another about these evidences and seeing the non-Christians respond. And often the non-Christians will actually help guide the discussion in a more productive way. That's great advice. Our last question is from Sue. She says, my church is currently focusing on trying to attract 18 to 29 year olds. And I've communicated to them that science faith questions are very important to people in this age group with the hope that they'll, they'll create a class and, and utilize RTB resources. However, I'm noticing 
my leadership isn't as convinced. They seem kind of lukewarm, open at best. Do you have any advice for Sue on how to create more interest in this area? Well, I think there you've got church leaders that, again, are worried, hey, this could be controversial. I mean, you've got the classic young earth, old earth, theistic evolution debates going on with Christian apologetics, and they're worried that people might get offended and leave. And I call that the backdoor problem, where you've got leaders concerned who's going to leave the church because some controversial issue is raised. And there, I think you need to present the front door opportunity. How many new people are we going to attract into our Christian community as a result of the fact that we're open to engaging them on the issues that they want to discuss? And we're actually willing to debate and dialogue in a friendly, charitable way. I mean, if you see people coming, uh, then they're going to say, well, you know, we got a couple of people leaving out the back door, but we got 10 times as many coming through the front door. And that, of course, typically gets Christian leaders very excited. That's really good. One thing I've noticed in working with that age range, too, is to kind of allow them to shape the topics. Ask them periodically and check in with them. What are the topics you guys are interested in? What are the questions that you are wrestling through with your faith? Make a big list of them and then kind of shape the content around those topics. It helps them feel like they're taking ownership of of the content development. It's especially crucial that age group don't teach too long. I mean, typically when I'm dealing with that age group and I got them for, say, a couple of hours, my teaching time will be 10 minutes or less. I want them to bring up the issues they want to discuss and kind of let them guide things and let them debate one another and kind of guide that debate along. So, you know, uh, that's a very interesting question there. I mean, what are some different ways we can approach that? And I think you're right. That age group, they want to be engaged given the opportunity for engagement. Very good. Thanks, Hugh, for all that practical advice. And I want to encourage everyone to check out Hugh's blog. Just go to reasons.org and search for today's new reason to believe.